Hello and welcome to our discussion on the basic theories of acids and bases. Um, kind of briefly introduced the idea of what characterizes an acid versus a base in the first video, but um, let's go ahead and kind of put some more details to it. Um, first of all, when we say an acid ionizes, we don't really mean that uh, you, know, you have free hydrogen ions floating around the system. That's not really true. Although we will represent it that way sometimes, it's not really exactly what's happening. What really happens is, um, if you recall from the last unit, the discussions on solutions we had, you, you remember that um, we said that the water uh, is got strong uh, hydrogen bonds with neighboring water molecules. And the forces that provide for that are the strong negative pole of the oxygen on water and the strong positive pole of the hydrogen on water. And those same forces are able to um, effectively uh, uh, dissociate the hydrogen from uh, an acid in, under most conditions. A lot of you know, under strong acid conditions, we know that happens a lot. In weak acids, it happens a little. Um, but those hydrogen ions don't just float around the system. What really, what really happens is they attach on the water molecules and become what's called the hydronium ion. And this is hydronium here. Uh, uh, it's got lots of other names, but it's kind of the modern accepted name is the hydronium ion. But you will see hydronium and hydrogen ion used interchangeably in chemistry. Right? They're both used. They both mean the same thing. Um, on, in the simplest terms, we'll use hydrogen ions. The uh, simpler terms, and sometimes too. Um, the first theory I want to discuss is the Arrhenius theory. Uh, and the Arrhenius theory seems appropriate, but it, it has some some weakness we'll talk about too. Uh, uh, Svante Arrhenius basically said that uh, an uh, Arrhenius acid ionizes an aqueous solution to produce hydrogen or hydronium ion. So um, it's limited to solution chemistry. Okay, An Arrhenius base, according to his theory, uh, contains hydroxide ions and ionizes in water to produce hydroxides. So keep, it doesn't always contain hydroxide ions. I shouldn't have that there, but the key idea is here is that you um, produce hydroxide ion in solution. And so sodium hydroxide ionizes to form sodium and hydroxide ions completely. Ammonia ionizes to a small degree, this should be a double headed arrow here, forgive me for that, to form ammonium ion and hydroxide ion. Sodium hydroxide, if you recall from our discussion on strong bases, is a strong base, whereas ammonia is not a strong base, it's a weak base. Um, so basically, uh, this slide's just here to represent, you know, how to identify uh, an Arrhenius acid and Arrhenius base. It's just as simple as it looks. Arrhenius, Arrhenius acids contain hydrogen ions. You know that they would drop in solution. They're going to produce hydrogen ion, and uh, these two bases will produce hydroxide, being Arrhenius bases. So the Arrhenius theory is fairly straightforward. Okay. Um, however, it's a little bit inadequate, and keep in mind that this is what makes the current theory that we use. Uh, most of the time, the dominant theory. Uh, Arrhenius theory can only be applied to reactions occurring in water. Uh, Acid-based chemistry occurs in all phases, and so we have to keep in mind that we're limiting ourselves by saying things only take place uh, or only serve as acids and bases in, in aqueous solutions. Some bases like ammonia don't actually contain hydroxide, and so the, the theory is limited in that way. We need to be able to broaden the definition a bit. So, um, Another thing to keep in mind while we talk about all this is we'll use the word proton to describe a hydrogen ion a lot, and that's exactly what it is. If you think about what a hydrogen ion is, a hydrogen ion is an atom that contains a proton and electron, sorry, a hydrogen atom contains a proton and an electron, and a hydrogen ion has lost the electron. So let's draw that out. Um, hydrogen atom has a single proton in the nucleus, E plus. And it's got in its 1s subshell one electron. And if that electron departs for one reason or another, all that remains is that proton in the nucleus. Thus, you'll see hydrogen ions often referred to as protons. There's an entire class of um, pharmaceuticals that are called proton pump inhibitors, whose entire job is to stop the pump in the stomach that um, produces hydrogen ions for digestion of food. And it helps alleviate um, diseases of the stomach. Uh, related to peptic ulcers. Um, so the hydrogen ion contains a single proton and an electron. So when it loses that electron, all that remains is that proton. So we refer to hydrogen ions as protons sometimes. The dominant theory we're going to use in chemistry is the Bronsted-Lowry theory. 
Um, in bronsted lowry theory, substances are defined by their actions. Um, and so it's all about the exchange of protons. Protons are going to be moving from one species to another, and that, that's what defines it as an acid or a base. A bronsted lowry acid is the reactant in a chemical reaction that donates a proton. Okay? A bronsted lowry base is a substance that accepts the proton. So it's all about where that hydrogen ion is going. If you look at this example, what you should see is you see a hydrogen ion on hydrochloric acid, and you have water. On the product side of this process, we see that that, chlor that chlorine no longer has a hydrogen stuck to it. The hydrogen has gone from hydrogen, sorry, from hydrochloric acid to water, forming the hydronium, also forming the chloride. It's the hydrogen that donated is the acid, the water that accepted is the base. The same um, graphic we see that um, on the product side we can make some definitions as well. Those are the conjugates. Uh, Product, the products contain the conjugates, and the reactants contain the bronsted lowry acid base. So the bronsted lowry conjugate acid is the product that forms after the bronsted lowry base except the hydrogen. So our water is the base, it accepts the hydrogen, so it's our conjugate acid. The conjugate base is the product that forms after the bronsted lowry acid has donated a hydrogen. So our acid donates a hydrogen, becoming the conjugate base. Okay. So let's look at this reaction. This is this is the way the, we might see a, a question on a test where we instead of getting a, a pretty um, simple chemical reaction, instead we get molecules. You know, and you you understand molecules so far. In the first video, we talked about carboxylic acids, um, but really you don't even need to know that for this process. So let's take a look at it. What we should note is that we have this molecule. We have this molecule. Hopefully, you recognize this as water. On the product side, we have what looks like water that's gained a hydrogen ion. That's hydronium. This is the molecule hydronium. Or pardon me, the ion hydronium. On the product side, what we should notice is that we have similar to this, something that's lost a hydrogen. So on the reactant side, this big molecule had a hydrogen stuck to this oxygen. On the product side, that oxygen's gone. In the absence, we have this negative charge. So the hydrogen's been lost for this species. And it's gained onto water forming hydronium. So which reactant is losing a hydrogen? Whoever's losing a hydrogen is your acid. Its partner on the product side that has become is our conjugate base. So let's connect those in the arrow to form a conjugate pair. This is a conjugate acid and base pair. Here we have water forming hydronium. This is the base. Water is the base. Hydronium is the conjugate acid because it now contains that hydrogen. Let's connect those with an arrow to make a conjugate acid, conjugate base, sorry, acid. I'll get this right. Base conjugate acid pair. So, what we see here is the flow of the hydrogen. It's gone from this species to this, forming a conjugate acid and conjugate base. Conjugates are always on the product side. Okay? As far as this relationship goes, this double headed arrow, as long as it's on the left, it's a reactant. As long as it's on the right, it's a product. One final thought about Bronsted-Lowry theory that we need to take note of. Um, Bronsted-Lowry uh, helps us understand uh, the behavior of, of acids and bases. When we think about strong acids, strong acids like hydrochloric acid in solution will form hydrogen ion and chloride ion. Okay? This is a strong acid. In other words, we expect there to be a whole lot of this and very little of this once we put the stuff in water. It can ionize completely. What we would not expect to happen is for this chloride to then gain a hydrogen ion and fall back to the reactant side. So strong acids make very weak conjugate base. The acid is here, conjugate base here. This is a strong acid. It's going to ionize completely. What's unlikely to happen is that that conjugate base turns around and forms hydrochloric acid a whole lot. So conjugate bases of strong acids are very weak. This is an important point as we go forward in chemistry. Strong acids make weak conjugate bases. Let's look at the flip side of that. Let's take acetic acid. The equilibrium dissociation of acetic acid, we know acetic acid is weak. It's the acid that makes up vinegar. It doesn't ionize a whole lot of water, less than less than 1%. So though we have written a product here of the dissociation, of 
the weak acid, acetic acid, the forward reaction, in other words, producing ions, is not very likely. This is a weak acid. This substance here, this acetate ion, this is a strong conjugate base, because we would expect this substance here to grab hydrogen ions and form the weak acid. So weak acids make strong conjugate bases. There's one more theory that we're not going to talk about, uh, but I do want to make you aware of because it does get mentioned from time to time if you look at other sources, which I hope you do. Um, uh, the whole Lewis acid base theory. Um, Lewis acid base theory is more appropriate for organic chemistry um, as it um, mostly focuses on electron pairs being donated and accepted in a chemical reaction, not focused on hydrogen ions but electron pairs. So we don't need to worry about Lewis, Lewis acids and bases in pre-AP chemistry. Okay? Lewis acid Lewis acid based chemistry is not a focus for our course. So if you get if you get into it and read about it, you get curious, that's great. I love it. Look into it. It's a lot of fun. Um, but it's not something we need you to understand for the purpose of this course. Um, I hope you hope you've enjoyed this uh, discussion about um, acid based theory. Hope you've taken high quality notes and are prepared to come to class and ask great questions and have um, fruitful discussions. Um, again, you can check out our website, falconchem.weebly.com for all the associated notes and documents that go with this presentation and others, and we'll see you in class.